Hello, welcome back to uh, track one of the clone conference. Our third talk today is from Tiberiu, um, giving us his fourth talk for the week and after also doing a training over the weekend. So thank you Tiberiu for all of the, everything that you have been showing us this week. Um, Tiberio has been using Zoop since 2003 and switched to Plone after trying to build his own CMS on top of Zoop. Um, he's currently doing a lot of work with Volto. Um, so right now, Tiberio is going to talk about uh, EEA dot uh, search lib. So go ahead. Thank you, Chrissy. Uh, hello, everybody. And uh, let me start my presentation. And I'll share my screen. Um, do I get a conf confirmation that this presentation works? <laughs> I had the yes, issue. it is there. Okay, cool. Okay, so um, yeah, we're going to talk today about uh, EA Search Lib, uh, which is a bunch of services, packages, libraries, and so on. And uh, together, they provide advanced search services. And uh, as part of those packages, we also have a Volto, integrate, a Volto integration. So there we are on topic, let's say. Um, it, it started the development uh, this year in April, and uh, we, we, it was developed by me, by Zoltan Sabo and Gita Bizo. These are the main developers. And um, to talk a little bit about uh, the history of this uh, search library, um, it's coming from uh, the EEA. And uh, when it comes to an organization such as EEA, it has a lot of specialized content uh, and a, a good search integration, uh, it, be, it becomes a high priority, right? So we have uh, seen development over the years of several search products at EEA, and many of them are still in use. And uh, we all know uh, EA Faceted Navigation. It is a, a complex and somewhat complete, I would say, search solution for Chrome websites. Uh, it has its advantages, the fact that it's uh, easy to set up. Uh, you, you install just an add-on, you put it in Plone, and more or less uh, easy to set up, right? <laughs> I mean, not, not as easy as, an, not as difficult as another uh, external service. But as the disadvantages, it has limited full, full text search uh, capabilities as it uses the Zoop catalog. And of course, you can only search long content. And uh, with the EA projects, we also have to search uh, across websites, across uh, many other data sources, and uh, the Zoop catalog becomes a limitation. And uh, the EA search server, uh, but I, um, it's another product that EA has, and it it is pro it's providing um, a search integration with uh, Elasticsearch, and it, the front end is uh, Im implemented with jQuery. It is the current, uh, the, let's say, default implementation for the search. Uh, the, for example, the EA Global Search, which is the main uh, EA search service, uh, is uh, still using it. And we are actively working to replace uh, this uh, search service. And that's because it has a few drawbacks, which I'll uh, explain. Um, so yeah, we have the this um, EA Global Search it indexes many websites. Uh, it, it is based on um, a process of uh, ping initiation from, uh, uh, from that website. So in Plone, when you uh, change a content or when you delete it, it, it has uh, an async worker that pings a central repository. And that central repository will then go to our Plone website and using uh, RDF Marshaller. Uh, it will grab the data of the content from Plone and it will index it in a virtuoso database. And from that point, we uh, use a Sparkle endpoint and we can draw, uh, we can download the data and put it in Elasticsearch. So all of this, yeah, it's a little bit uh, convoluted. And uh, the, the, the biggest downside is that uh, being, uh, being based on jQuery and it's, hard to develop uh, and because the framework is too big, uh, only one guy, which is Sultan, knows how to uh, to deal with that framework because he's the main um, 
developer for that one. So yeah, we we want something else right now. Uh, but this uh, search server search service um, has been already implemented in some uh, some websites, for example, the Climate Adapt, the Forest Information uh, System in Europe, and this is a Volto website actually, and uh, like it it just highlights one of the drawbacks of uh, the old jQuery implementation. But we have a Volto website which is running on uh, React. And basically, we're integrating it somehow because it's a more or less a fake integration. Just we've just added the look and feel of the forest website to a search server deployment in this case to make it appear that's integrated. But there are a thousand drawbacks with this. So uh, the ideal scenario is uh, somewhere where we have uh, this search, but fully integrated in the website like fully running uh, as part of the JavaScript bundles, as part of, uh, of the code of that website, not uh, so that it, it doesn't require uh, external templates, it doesn't require special uh, snippets of HTML, but to just integrate the header and footer and so on for the website. Um, there is another uh, solution, let's say, from EEA, and this is uh, deprecated. It's uh, something that I've developed uh, last last year as part of a BICEV, a Biodiversity Information System for Europe, and that that was uh, actually the first integration of Volto with Elasticsearch that I've worked on, and um, it's. Um, I've done it that way because I, I knew that uh, integrating the jQuery based solution would be hard, right? So that um, I've, I've worked with the Volta search kit, uh, with, sorry, with search kit, which is an external uh, third party library that is based on React and integrates with uh, Elasticsearch. So, um, but I, I want to mention not uh, not just uh, Volto Search Kit, but also there's another uh, product from the Volto community. Uh, I think it's called Volto Search Kit, the same, but uh, it's made by Katya. Uh, I, I don't I don't actually know the status of that one. Uh, but this one, in case you're just interested on on very fast creating a photo integration with Elasticsearch, you can take it uh, an, as an example. And uh, during this development process, uh, we quickly understood that there is one little thing and, and trick that we can do with Volto uh, that can help us um, with the development process and also with the uh, deployment. And that is to create uh, middlewares that will proxy the Elasticsearch backends to the front end, right? And uh, that is because Volto uh, is running on top of Express.js, which is a Node.js uh, HTTP server. And that Node.js HTTP server supports extensions, middlewares. Uh, as part of this project, we've actually gone into Volto and improved that part. Uh, split up, made it not possible to uh, create mid middlewares from both add-ons and so on. Um, yeah, <clears throat> so uh, right now we've arrived at the EA search, which is supposed to be the, that one search appliance to rule them all, right? Uh, so the idea is to create a library on top of React and uh, it can be used to build Elasticsearch powered search engines and we will also add because it's the craze and it's the time we'll we'll also add um, semantic search capabilities and nlp uh, processing um so search lib is the internal name uh, it represents a bunch of packages uh, services workflows and uh, we will take a look, look at them as part of uh, developing this uh, search lib, we will also modernize the UI. Uh, right now, we have we have many implementations, and uh, we started, for example, with uh, re-implementing the UI that is provided by EA Global Search. But uh, now uh, we are in the process of defining or and refining uh, how that search UI 
would look like. Um, and uh, before being implemented in jQuery, it was almost impossible to uh, to take the task of refining that UI, right? So, and yeah, it's an outdated technology. There's, there was no point in even trying to, to improve things there. Um, and it's a big architecture. We have a lot of components, more or less, but they are all uh, open source. Uh, we have Docker images, uh, we have documentation. In principle, it is possible that you take this pro uh, project and uh, you can uh, run it on your own. And we already have uh, other companies uh, that, that will or are in the process of uh, taking this package and services and uh, develop, developing for non-EA websites. And they've reported that um, things are good and uh, yeah, uh, it, it, they, they've had success in, uh, in, in uh, bootstrapping and having it running, running on their websites. Okay, so uh, there is the searchlib main library, which is the React library. It provides uh, request elastic search request integration UI and so on. Uh, we have uh, uh, searchlib global search, for example, which is a separate package that provides just configuration, searchlib less, middleware, and Volto searchlib as a separate uh, add-on, Volto add-on. And we already have um, Volto global search as a, as a deployment. We have uh, the global search standalone, which can be used to test outside the Volto and the catalog of measures, which is an actual deployment of this uh, search, uh, search library. And it's running on classic Plong 5. So there's a huge advantage of, of, of being able to develop in uh, React and being able to uh, have this modern uh, workflow and uh, Webpack pipeline, for example, that we can actually integrate a lot uh, faster and easier uh, with any deployment target, right? And in the back end, we have Elasticsearch as the database and the search uh, engine. We have an NLP server, uh, which is a, a uh, standalone service, and I'm going to explain exactly what it does. And the, we use Apache Work Airflow as a task runner and uh, to run a harvester. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we choose um, Apache Airflow as task runner. Um, it, it has pretty wide community backing, right? It's coming, it, it is backed by uh, Apache Foundation. Uh, there's a lot of uh, packages that will integrate uh, with it. And um, so it's not the, it's it, uh, using Airflow for, um, sorry, <laughs> using Airflow for, uh, as a harvester is not the most straightforward uh, thing to do because it has this uh, configuration of uh, DAGs that are not really dynamic. So, but we managed to achieve that. And uh, if anyone uh, it, it tries to do the same thing, there is uh, knowledge in, in this community and uh, we can help with that. Um, so I was mentioning the uh, configuration scripts of Apache. Uh, they are, let's say the equivalent of workflows. Uh, Apache Airflow calls them DAGs, directed cyclical DAGs. Uh, graphs, sorry, and they cannot be fully dynamic. So we chain them. Basically, we have uh, a DAG that can uh, trigger another DAG. And that is how we build uh, the harvester because we will have, for example, one DAG which, which will generate a list of links and then it will trigger another DAG for each one of those links. Uh, we can, uh, and Apache is a, uh, uh, sorry, Airflow is a wonderful tool. Uh, and, and I mean, we didn't choose it just because it can run tasks, but, but also because uh, you can tr manually trigger tasks uh, and uh, DAGs, and you can uh, also monitor uh, very well uh, what happens. Uh, there are um, dynamic, not dynamic, sorry. There are pools that we can assign to each uh, website, for example and to each um, type of task. So it's 
it provides a lot of control uh, where, when uh, we will uh, scale this uh, harvester. Okay, so Mario, uh, we are seeing your presenter notes like as a second window on top of your presentation. Okay, sorry, <laughs> but uh, I don't know if it's uh, if it's uh, embarrassing or not. But I will try to uh, fix that. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Um, okay, so um, what else do we have? Um, we have um, uh, we have uh, this uh, DAG that can uh, create uh, uh, that will stash documents in the Elasticsearch, and it will uh, then trigger a process to um, to process those documents with the NLP server. Uh, yeah, and uh, I was talking about the logging uh, of um, of tasks of and of jobs in Elasticsearch in, in Airflow, and they look like that. And and uh, this is one of the main advantages of using Airflow for such a task, for such a let's say, um, yeah. Okay, so uh, now we have the NLP uh, server, which I think it's uh, the third in line of NLP services that I've developed. And um, I right now it's running on uh, Python and Fast, fast API. Uh, it, it is in uh, GitHub on EA uh, NLP server. We use uh, another library called uh, Haystack. And that one provides um the most important functionality which is the uh, question and answering uh, ser uh, um, models but also some uh, glue code for example the pipeline engines and, and so on and at the base of this all we use the transformers in the and hugging face uh, as a nlp library Okay, so um, as NLP server uh, capabilities, we have Elasticsearch proxy, uh, search, search results, re-ranking, question and answering, query classification, summarization, similarity, question generation, name identity, recognition, extraction, zero shot classifier, classifier and text embedding. And if we have uh, time uh, in the presentation, I will also show it uh, in action to see what it exactly that looks like and uh, what it can do. Um, so, uh, this is an example of uh, a pipeline and how it looks like in Elasticsearch, in, uh, sorry, in NLP server. Um, basically, we, we have these pipelines with nodes and both, each node in the pipeline uh, has configuration and we use uh, YML uh, pipeline, uh, YML files for, to declare this pipeline. Uh, now, uh, the, the QA uh, process is based on um, very recent work. Uh, it is uh, it is models trained with uh, dual encoder framework, um, and um, basically, um, it, it is recent machine learning work. I, I will not try to explain it because it, it's quite complex. But uh, the idea is that um, there are models. There is open source code that can uh, integrate those models. And it is possible to use them uh, quite uh, easily, I would say, to, to create a question and answering search engine. Um, there is a process where, so basically you have the document store and that can be uh, some, something like a vector search engine like WeVA or just a classic search engine like Elasticsearch. So uh, when you type a question, um, some documents will be retrieved from the document store, let's say 20 of them, and uh, they will be passed to the uh, answer extraction model, which will take a look at these uh, answers, and then um, uh, just take a look at the documents and then just extract the answers uh, from them. <clears throat> and um, yeah, we don't we don't uh, extract we don't uh, pass a lot more uh, documents to the reader because it it uh, it is quite costly uh, the tokenization and everything else 
uh, it, it all needs to run on the GPU, uh, actually. So uh, now uh, the current status, uh, we've started the work in April, May 2021. Uh, we have a launch due next year, uh, but um, we, as I mentioned, we already have it deployed. Uh, and it's used on uh, non-EA projects uh, from, uh, for example, the code syntax is working on that one. And we have the Volto integration. I have this uh, screenshot of what the Volto settings screen uh, uh, sidebar looks like. And of course, we have a lot of uh, UI improvements and uh, NLP uh, work ahead of us. And I will try to give you a demonstration of uh, this search engine. As I have it running on my machine, um, yeah. So uh, this is running in Volto. Uh, okay, we're not seeing it yet. Okay, hold on a second. I will try again. This Zoom screen, screen sharing is always uh, uh, with problems. So search leap share. Okay. There we go. So, okay, cool. So um, this is. This is uh, the, um, yeah, the main page of the search engine. Um, and uh, this is actually one of the challenges that we had uh, because we are uh, building a search engine and a semantic search engine, but we need, still need strong metadata support. Like uh, we, need, we need those filters that uh, 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 you see on uh, search engines and uh, yeah, basically you have to be able to, uh, to provide uh, metadata filters like, uh, yeah, let's say the content type uh, that I'm showing you here. And all of, all of this basically needs to be indexed in Elasticsearch and associated with the uh, metadata of each document. And that also creates uh, a problem that, for example, uh, the NLP models they prefer um, uh, text that is. Uh, uh, they prefer text that is really short. For example, five hundred uh, characters or, or such. So uh, we had we have to run basically two indexes. We have to run one that is uh, uh, with the raw information, and then on another one that's prepared uh, where each document is split. Uh, into multiple uh, potential do documents and so on. So yeah, it complicates the infrastructure, but uh, it's fine. So uh, we have uh, we have the facets uh, left and right, uh, and um, the most important uh, thing that we can do, and uh, it, it is quite nice, is the fact that uh, we can ask questions. For example, what is GHG? And there will be uh, a little bit of waiting, but then we get a direct answer. Uh, and then we can ask uh, some other questions like, uh, <laughs> yeah, who is the director of EEA? Uh, but this one actually just uh, highlights to a potential problem that uh, you can have with this uh, type of search engine, which is the fact that um, if this information is very much dependent on uh, freshness. So not only, um, you know, you cannot rely just on the NLP models to, to tell you the answer because given the wrong documents in the uh, answer extraction reader, you, <laughs> it will basically generate a right answer, but maybe it was right uh, like, uh, 10 years ago, right? And not it's not uh, current anymore. And that is because the questions are also time dependent and they, they depend on the information that we, we cannot provide. Um, yeah, so um, of course, uh, there's all the niceties in this search engines like, uh, yeah, title, the script, I mean, uh, sorting and uh, various views and so on. And actually uh, working on this uh, search engine inspired me to work on the on the current search block in Volto. So yeah, we have this one to thank, thank for. Um, what else we have? We have the NLP We're server. We're missing the screen sharing again. Sorry? We so we're missing the screen sharing again. Okay, okay, let me try again. 
Um, actually, I'm going to just uh, share my whole uh, uh, screen just because it would be easier. And okay, come on, go, go away. Okay, so um, actually, okay, let's start from the beginning. This is uh, the main uh, interface for the search server. Uh, it lists all the de deployed, let's say, pipelines currently in the system. And it is possible to start uh, this search server uh, with just one or two pipelines so that you can uh, create customized deployments of this and or if you don't need uh, certain models we are not loaded in um, memory and especially gpu memory so uh, we have things like uh, search qa and similarity and so on and so on which uh, i've already enumerated but uh, if we go to uh, sorry if we go to uh, the api uh, then, then we have the open API interface where we can actually interact with uh, the United service and uh, we can do stuff like, for example, and I will bump my, uh, my, uh, yeah, zoom. Uh, so, uh, the, the, this server already comes with some, uh, text as the default so that it can be quickly tried like this. So if we provide this document and we ask it to execute, then we get, uh, we get, sorry, we get here, the uh, summarized. And I, I find it uh, quite interesting, uh, but it says, uh, I mean, it's amazing the state of the art uh, that is uh, right now with the NLP models and, and what they can do. And uh, they're not even uh, fine-tuned models, right? So if, for example, if I search for joint report, you will see that, for example, have published a joint report on the environment impact, it's nowhere. So the joint report is here, this joint report. So actually uh, the summarizer model uh, ab abstracted and generated new text from, uh, from uh, the, the provided uh, input. Um, I, uh, I like this one, for example, the zero shot classifier. So given some text and some labels, it can uh, tell you which one it is. So we have a candidate labels. We have, and this uh, this is a model that didn't see any uh, specific training. So it's not a categorization model where you uh, have some text and then uh, train it for those labels. It can just uh, tell you directly that, for example, uh, it has it is about water, marine, uh, environment, and transport. Uh, that text that I provided. And that could be used, for example, to uh, auto-suggest tags based on uh, e already existing tags in the system and so on. And we're probably going to develop uh, integration for that one. Um, yeah, query classifier, it's an important one. It, uh, we use it in uh, already in the search. And that's because uh, it can tell us if, it, if we're dealing with some keywords, a question, or a statement so that we can decide if we should run uh, the QA or not. Um, we have uh, the similarity, and that one can tell you, uh, for example, how similar is one sentence to another. I like this one, the question generation, because it opens a lot of uh, possibilities. So given some text like this, uh, and it's, this one will take a little bit of time because uh, it's not optimized for a GPU. I have to do that. It's on my to-do list. So uh, it will um, it will generate new questions uh, that where the answer lies in the text. So uh, for example, it generated this type of question. Uh, how many accidental oil spills, right? And it also knows uh, which is the answer and, and so on and so on. And it even has uh, questions where there are multiple choices. And this is, um, <clears throat> yeah, this is recent work uh, and it's it's all open source, all available. So, so if uh, you're trying to build something uh, similar, you can uh, use uh, the NLP service for this one or you can yeah, build your own. Uh, what else uh, interesting do we have here? Um, yeah, named entity uh, extraction summarizer, which I've mentioned, and it, yeah, I think that's it. That's what I have right now um, activated. Uh, well, 
this is it. Um, I'm waiting you for you in the GC. If you ask questions or ideas and so on, you can just uh, um, uh, ask me anything. Thank you for watching. And thank you again to Berio for presenting. Uh, I'm sure it'd be nice to be uh, be done for the week presenting now. Uh, so everyone, go ahead and join in in Jitsi. Uh, I've put the link in Slack, and uh, we'll see you all later. Thank you. Ciao.